In this segment of the Ken Patera shoot interview, the name of Eric Bischoff was brought up, and Ken Patera definitely had nothing nice to say about Eric Bischoff, as you see here, back in his AWA days in the late 80s. And the funny thing is, is I actually sent this clip to Eric Bischoff on Twitter a couple years back, and he definitely saw it because he talks about it with Conrad Thompson on their podcast. I'll play that clip with Eric Bischoff talking about Ken Patera and the initial shoot interview clip that caused that reaction from Eric Bischoff himself. Any good Ken Patera stories I should ask him about? And you quoted it and said, who is Ken Patera? <laughs> well, that was in reference to a little shoot interview clip that I saw. And I thought, God, how, how the hell did I end up getting any heat with Ken Patera? I mean, I, we worked together for maybe a cup and a half of coffee. And at that time, I was just basically hauling out the garbage and keeping the plants watered at AWA. So there's no reason for him to be as nasty as he was in that shoot interview. Eric Bischoff. Um, what was he like when he was a cameraman for AWA? Well, that's what he was. He was just a fucking jabroni trying to make a living. I don't know, making 20 bucks a day. Yeah. I don't think, uh, gone, you couldn't have paid him more than 20 bucks a day. There was no money in the AWA. Yeah. Did you think that he showed any qualities where he would go on? Absolutely none. Okay. I thought he was just like everybody, just a fucking jabroni trying to hang around the, the wrestlers. And uh, next thing I know, uh, uh, he needs some help with his interviewing technique. So I had a limousine service at the time. And I was I lived over on the St. Paul side, so I'd get one of my limo drivers to drive me and my girlfriend over to the wrestling office. You know, it was after hours and stuff, so I'd get a case of beer on ice, you know, go over there. A couple other, Wayne Bloom and a couple other guys would show up. You know, we'd help Eric do some interview different techniques and stuff and I said what's this all about Eric I said you can start uh, interviewing guys you know doing the interview phase and well I'm, I'm gonna yeah and it, there's a, might be a chance with uh, the NWA I think that was before the WCW chain name change I said really I said uh, yeah. yeah I thought they had some pretty good guys down there you know so I didn't think he even had a chance but they picked him up while they had Cowboy Bill Watts and a bunch of other guys go through the WCW insulting, you know, that it went from a wrestling mentality to a corporate mentality. That's how the W, you know, because it was owned by Turner Network. And uh, so they wanted somebody, you know, to run the wrestling organization that really wasn't a wrestler and could fit in more with the corporate mentality. So, yeah, Eric Bischoff, he applies for the fucking job and lo and behold, he gets the fucking job. I mean, here's a guy with, with absolutely no experience. I mean, very little. He put in a thimble, you know, compared to most people, you know, that have been around. And uh, I really didn't think anything of it. And here, the next thing I know, he's making millions of dollars and running a multi-million dollar corporation and giving all the owners money away. And he killed the goose that was laying the golden eggs. Because he basically didn't know how to run a fucking organization. And next thing I know, he's fucking working for Vince McMahon, the WWF. Well, what the fuck's this all about? You know, I don't know if there's a little wishy-washy there with uh, McMahon and Patterson and Bischoff. I don't know if those guys, you know, they they wear pants in the day and dresses at night. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there. Sometimes I wonder. I've heard stories. <laughs> Any stories you can tell us? No, no, no. <laughs>